Hi, in today's video, we're going to talk about astrophotography imaging. How do you produce those beautiful photos that you see online or in a magazine? Surely it's as simple as taking your camera outside, taking a photo, and uploading it to NASA, right? Right. I'm John Robinson, the AstroTard, and you're watching the Deep Sky Channel. Like you, I love the night sky. I love to see what's out there. I love to contemplate our place in the universe and how we got here and is there anyone out there and how did this all get here? Is it by design or by accident? All these questions kind of come up when you look at these beautiful objects that are out there. And I've always been interested in those things. So how do you take those pictures? How do you produce them? Well, we lived down here on Earth and we have to deal with several challenges when we take our photos. Not only do we need to have some special equipment, but there's a there's a reason for the equipment that we have. An Earth-bound observer has to deal with uh, all kinds of anomalies. So a photon from a deep sky object that's going to enter your eye or enter your camera has to pass through our atmosphere. And we have to deal with uh, not only the photon that's coming, but the aberration of the atmosphere while that photon is coming. Meaning things like the jet stream, or the clouds, or the humidity, or you know just light pollution around you. All of those things will affect how the image looks when you capture it with your camera. So the way we deal with all those anomalies is rather than just take one shot, one picture, we take hundreds or thousands of pictures of the same thing and then we do what's called stacking where we stack these images on top of each other and stacking we're looking for what's constant and consistent in all the photos versus what's temporary and only there for a short time chances are if it's temporary and not very frequent then it's probably not something we want it's probably noise you know like turbulence in the sky or light pollution or an asteroid or something versus if it's always there and constant in every one of the images that's probably what you want to process so that's a technique we use we take hundreds and thousands of photos of the same spot and then we produce a crisp clear image so then that brings up another challenge though if we have to take hundreds or thousands of photos that means we're going to have to point our telescope and our camera at the same object for several hours or maybe all night or maybe several nights at a time some of the images that i've done are taken 24 hours of data pointing at the same place in the sky and taking pictures that entire time so that means if you're going to point to something that long you're going to need to be able to point at it while the sky is moving above you Obviously, there's rotating, and so oh, really? so that's why we use equatorial mounts, something that can move with the sky and keep the camera pointed in that same direction the entire time. So here's an animation of what I'm talking about, and sort of the whole process of how we create a picture from beginning to, to end. They invented a cell phone in 1967. Who knew? Okay, so let's assume that you've got a clear night sky and that you've selected a target that you want to capture. You brought out your fancy, expensive equipment, your software for tracking and guiding. As the star moves across the sky, your mount will track and take pictures. These pictures are called raw subs. They're grainy and noisy. You take the raw subs with your favorite tool like PixInsight, and you take your calibration frames, flats, darks, and bias to produce calibrated subs. These are the subs that are missing the camera artifacts like the white pixels, the vignetting, and the read noise. Once we have the calibrated subs, then we're gonna go ahead and register or align them because each of the subs is slightly out of alignment, probably due to dithering. And so we're gonna line them up, pick one reference star, and all the registered subs lined up. Then we're gonna take our favorite program, Deep Sky Stacker, Pix Insight will work and we're going to stack the images together. We're going to take the average value of all the pixels to produce a final stacked image that will reflect that average value. This will be a clean image. 
Then we'll repeat that for all of the channels that we have, the red, green, and the blue channels based on the different filters that you may have if it's a mono camera. But you're going to combine with your favorite software, I use PixInsight, to produce, voila, your final image. So as you can see, you probably took you know, maybe a thousand photos, including the calibration frames, to produce this one image, and it probably took you three or four nights to do it. Well, that's it. There's obviously more to taking the photos. There's an, really, there's an art to putting them together in the post-processing, which we'll cover next time in another video. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please hit the subscribe button, and I'm hoping you have clear skies. See you next time. Bye.